My name is Michael Bannessy. I'm a professor of human brain research at the University of London. Non-invasive brain stimulation refers to a range of techniques that allow you to modulate brain activity without having to invasively kind of cut away into the skull or anything like this. They effectively involve using either magnetic pulses or electrical stimulation to the scalp but that can actually modulate your brain activity below. The technique of non-invasive brain stimulation is rapidly changing. Um, there's been lots of work over the last decades or so really pushing it forward and it continues to do so. In terms of where it's going, there's a lot of pressure or a lot of interest, I should say, on multimodal techniques, so combining stimulation approaches across different domains. Um, and it has a lot of interest in the potential that it might be able to be used in either clinical groups to help performance or even in typical groups as well. The method of non-invasive brain stimulation has been tried in a variety of conditions and has been shown to have some efficacy. Um, one example is depression. Um, so there's been work where some form of brain stimulation known as transcranial magnetic stimulation um, has been shown in clinical trials to improve depressive symptoms in individuals that have major depressive syndrome uh, who have typically been treatment resistant in the past. There are a number of homemade stimulation devices currently available on the market and they're actually quite worrying for me as a researcher and for the community. Uh, the devices that we use that are typically developed go under rigorous testing, they're validated, they're certified and then we actually also test them in the lab to make sure that they are doing what we think they are doing. Um, the homemade devices, there's much less control over that. You have no real regulation and that is quite concerning, um, especially when one considers some of the side effects that you can get. You know, for instance, an unintended consequence of getting worse on a task. That can happen. Even with a device that we know works well, that can happen. So you need to be careful there. But also things like burning, skin irritation, all these things can happen as well. And if a device is not regulated, it's even more risky. There are several new technologies coming through to help us fight neural developmental or neurological dis disorders or diseases. Uh, brain stimulation is one where there has been a lot of interest. Um, for instance, looking at recovery of function after stroke, can we use brain stimulation to aid that type of recovery? Not on its own, but in combination with the therapy that people are going through. Um, in certain neurodevelopmental disorders, um, People can identify a variety of those things like autism, dyslexia, a number of conditions like that. There's also been interest in trying to use brain stimulation in that domain to improve performance or aid it. Um, and so a number of studies ongoing, uh, perhaps not enough clinical trials just yet, but promising results to suggest it can be useful. Electrical stimulation, particularly transcranial electric stimulation, changes the brain by acting upon something called the membrane potential. So basically your brain cells fire based on electrical voltage and what transcranial electric stimulation is doing is sending a weak amount of current, roughly enough to power a small flashlight, through the brain in order to change the excitability of the brain cells under the electrode. This excitability change can make those cells more or less likely to fire, so it's playing around with the electrical voltage and that's largely how transcranial electric stimulation is working. One example where transcranial electric stimulation has helped performance is in the context of creativity. So people have used something called transcranial alternating current stimulation. This is a type of stimulation that allows us to try to put your brain into a certain frequency, into a certain state. And there are certain specific states that have been shown to be useful for creativity. So by non-invasively inducing that frequency, it can help you be in the zone, so to speak, before you start being creative. And this has been shown to help creativity to some degree. Another example is by targeting brain regions that are thought to play a role in the creative process, particularly the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, a region just at the front of your head. And people have found that by modulating the activity of that region, that can also improve creative problem solving. There are lots of other potential uses for non-invasive brain stimulation. People have shown it can be beneficial to modulate perception, modulate memory, modulate lots of other areas of cognition, including social processing as well. So in an applied sense, there's lots of potential. In an experimental sense as well, it's very helpful in the lab because it allows us to understand the brain. Because by changing brain activity, we can see what effect does that have on a certain task. And that effect can be informative about what that brain area does. 
There's a real need for us to integrate technologies in neuroscience and the reason for this is that one method is insightful but it always has its limitations. So for instance, brain imaging can tell us about the relationship or the correlation between a brain area and behaviour, but it can't necessarily tell us that much about when in time it plays a role or if something is causal or not. So combining it with another technique that allows us to develop that insight gives us a more powerful picture. So really, if we want a holistic picture of brain function, relying on one technique alone is never going to be enough. We need multiple techniques converging together. It's a real challenge to integrate them though. So you really do need to be working with partners who can actually help you to achieve that aim. One of the partners that we've worked with over the years that have been really helpful in allowing us to integrate solutions are NeuroDevice. We found them really beneficial as partners because they take time to understand our problems and find ways, solutions, you know, for us to integrate and move forward in order to address them. Some of their kits and developments related to brain stimulation have been very novel in the field. Uh, the new NeuroStim device, for instance, that's involved in transcranial brain stimulation uh, is actually something that's come about for a collaboration between NeuroDevice and other academics actually getting together and talking about what are the problems, what are we missing in the current devices. And they really took on board our feedback and have developed a device that's particularly useful and has a lot of potential to move forward.